We're back with our annual series, Thanks and Giving, celebrating 15 years highlighting the life-saving work done at the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. This one is especially close to Marlo Thomas's heart. We're going to talk to Marlo in just a moment. But first, here's NBC's Kristen Dahlgren with an inspiring story of perseverance and a future that might not have been were it not for St. Jude. Hope I can count on your vote. 30-year-old Gabby Salinas is a fighter. Now it's time to celebrate and watch our hard work come in. Yeah. She vigorously campaigned in the recent midterms to unseat an incumbent in the Tennessee State Senate. Thank you. Thank you for believing in me. And although she lost the election, she knows all too well what it's like to be defeated and come back stronger. Gabby is not only a fighter, she's a survivor. Her story caught the attention of actress Marlo Thomas after reading an article about a seven-year-old budding gymnast diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma, an aggressive type of bone cancer who struggled to get medical care. I couldn't believe it. This little girl whose life was on the line was released from a hospital because her family didn't have the money. I thought if there was any child that signified why St. Jude was there, was this little girl from Bolivia. She immediately arranged for Gabby and her family to be sent to St. Jude. Her story garnered national attention, even here on Today in 1996. Gabrielita Salinas, turned out of a hospital in New York for lack of money, has been flown to a new hospital in Memphis, Tennessee, one that agreed to treat the cancer in her spine for free. Soon after Gabby's arrival at St. Jude, Marlo met the little girl that warmed her heart. I turned around and there was Gabby running to me. I, I cannot tell you, it was one of the most thrilling moments of my life. That thrilling moment fostered a nurturing friendship needed when life handed Gabby more setbacks and unimaginable grief. 13 months after the Salinas family arrived at St. Jude, 55 miles east of Memphis, a crash killed Gabby's beloved father, Omar, and little sister, Valentina. It paralyzed her then pregnant mother, Jacqueline, who survived delivering a boy. As if that weren't enough, more battles had to be fought. At the age of 15, Gabby was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. For that type of cancer was surgery and radiation. And then um, my senior year, during a regular checkup, we found that it had come back and I had to go through another round of radiation. Years later, she returned to give back to the hospital that saved her. I wanted to be part of the great science that was happening there. This is where our story began. Yes. Today, the horizon is brighter and Gabby is cancer free. Oh, I love this picture. Working on her doctorate in pharmaceutical sciences. Because most of her life has been spent in a hospital, health care became a priority for her. I'm a survivor. As did politics. I wanted to run because I grew up in a time where pre-existing conditions were a thing and I was being discriminated by insurance companies. I'm so proud of Gabby. What a young woman she is. She lost in a tight race, but she considers herself way ahead of the game. Omar is my angel. <laughs> She's the reason I'm alive. Without St. Jude, I wouldn't be here. And I wouldn't be able to do any of the stuff that I've done. I'm finishing out my PhD, so next time you see me, I'll be Dr. Salinas. That is Marlo everything. Thomas is the National Outreach Director for St. Jude. Good to see you, as always, Marlo. Good Thank morning. You. We were just talking. Do you still see cases like this where children are denied medical care because they just don't have the funds? You know, yesterday, Craig, you were saying how impressed you were that nobody pays at St. Jude. That's not an altruistic idea, you know. That's a matter of life and death. Mm -hmm. Gabby was, was rejected by a New York hospital because her parents didn't have insurance and they didn't have a down payment. Oh. And so she would have died without the treatment. We had a little boy who who had a bone marrow transplant at another hospital. His doctor wanted him to have a second bone marrow transplant, mm. and the insurance company stamped it unnecessary procedure. Mm. He was on his way to hospice, mm. and they brought him to St. Jude, where he had three more bone marrow transplants, and now he's 16 years old, and he's playing on a golf team. Mm. No child should die because the parent doesn't have the money or the insurance to take care of him. And that's what this whole Thanksgiving program is all about. We're raising money because we're a not-for-profit hospital. Nobody pays. So this thanks and giving campaign is our way of paying for everything that we need because we must, we must raise 78% of our budget from the public. We're a not-for-profit. We're for a 
for-profit hospitals yeah. has to only raise 8% from the public. Mm. So this really is the lifeblood of St. Jude. Marlo Thomas, your, your stories this week, mm. the St. Jude stories have really touched all of us. Mm -hmm. All of us. Thank and I you. love how they touch you. Thank I you love so to much. see a man going to touch as he does. Thank you. <laughs>